Hello everyone, my name is Anna and today I'll show you how to link data from different data sources. Since we don't want to be yet another boring tutorial, we thought of a nice use case for you. Imagine that you represent a real estate agency in London area. Your goals are to provide excellent service to a possible buyer and to have one of the houses sold. So how the reality looks like and how it can be changed. Typical real estate agency has an internal database of available houses, their features and prices. However, a client usually wants to know more than just the basic information about the house. In many cases, the client would ask about the neighborhood in which the potential home is located. Such information can be either collected through the grapevine or by making extensive research in particular areas according to officially published data. It of course requires time and effort, which can be partially eliminated by applying leaked data technologies. The advantage of using leaked data gives the opportunity to connect data from many different sources such as census data, energy consumption, and crime data. Therefore, provide more relevant and interesting information to a client. Applying link data techniques allow for connecting a house location to more general data about a particular borough. For example, the client can be informed about the structure of population in a particular region. Therefore, the client can learn whether his or her potential neighbors are more mature, maybe retired, or quite the opposite, young and active. What is more, such general data usually contain information about the percentage of immigrant residents and their origin. Therefore, the potential client may get the information about the neighbors' nationalities in the area. Census data can also provide information about council tax in boroughs, the number of new homes built in the area or percentage of green spaces in particular boroughs. Therefore, instead of showing a house, an agent can provide a client with useful information about the quality of their neighborhood. More importantly, real estate housing database can be linked to publicly available crime information for particular boroughs. Therefore, the real estate agents can provide a comparison of a particular neighborhood or borough to other areas. Crime data usually contains information about robberies, burglaries, violence or drugs over years in particular regions. Hence, it can be used as an argument that a particular area improves in terms of safety that can be related to particular nationalities which are living in a close proximity to a house of interest. Another important aspect could be energy consumption. Link data can deliver information about the share of consumption sectors, industry, domestic or transport in the region. This way, the client could get information about what sector spends the most energy in a potential housed area. It can, for example, give an answer whether a particular area is more industrial or domestic. These are only a few possible examples of the reading from linked data. However, our goal is focused not only on showing you the opportunities of linked data, but also on showing you how such connections can be produced. Therefore, in the next part of this presentation, we'll show you on a step-by-step -step basis how it is done. For the purpose of this example, we identified three key datasets. London borough profiles, crime rates in boroughs, and total energy consumption in boroughs. These datasets can be found on data.london.gov.uk. We provided proper links in the movie description. Please download them now for later use. When we look at the data, we see that they all describe London boroughs from different angles. Therefore, if we'd be able to link such data instead of looking at the different data sources, we could simply make one query and get this information straight away. As we see, these data sets have names of the boroughs in common. Therefore, there is a common overlap that could be used for linking them between each other. How we are going to connect them? The procedure is very simple. Since the data we are going to use are presented in a tabular form, we'll first convert them into a common format and clean from unneeded metadata. We'll use Google Refine to do that. Our goal is to leave only this information which will be used in our example. Next, we'll build a skeleton based on one of the common ontologies and this way we'll transform our tabular data to RDF. This is also done in Google Refine, but this time we'll use one of the available extensions, RDF extension to Google Refine. Such data have to be stored somewhere. Since we work on data represented in a graph form, we'll have to use a graph storage. For the purpose of this example, we'll use Fuseki. But of course, any other graph storage can be used. When we will have all the data sets converted into RDF, we'll start linking them. We'll show you how to create links between particular RDF graphs. As we just showed you on a previous slide, we'll try to create links between particular names of London boroughs. To do so, we'll use SyncLink Discovery Framework. Since we don't have access to a real estate database of houses, for the purpose of this example, we'll connect only these three external data sources. However, by analogy, you can do that on database of houses as well. 
In order to gain online access to our new Lilink database, we'll show you how to use Pubby. This is a very general pipeline. However, if we follow every step that we just showed you, we'll be able to create link data from the datasets we just chosen for our example. In the next movies, we'll focus on details of how to perform each single step. The first tutorial will focus on how to properly transform our data to RDF. We'll cover the two actions that are performed in Google Refine, unifying and cleaning, and also converting to RDF. Last movie will focus on the rest steps in the pipeline. We'll show you how to use the graph storage, interlink air device datasets, and publish them on the web.